Hello everyone, and welcome to Half-Life 2, Episode 2. And today, the map I'm going to be checking out is one titled Feralis Obscurum. Now, I don't know what that title means, and the ModDB page isn't really forthcoming with any additional information. The reason this was on my radar is because it was recommended to me by users on the community Discord, which, by the way, I highly recommend joining if you're into all things creepy and comfy. And they told me that this is kind of a liminal space map. Of course, it's been a while since I've done one of those, so I'm very intrigued. Something's not right here. Oh, what a perfect image to begin a liminal space map on. Excuse me while I become the ultimate parody of myself and launch into an entire speech before I've even touched the mouse. Something's not right here. Ominous and ambiguous. Perfect for getting ready to explore a creepy, unknown, otherworldly space. I've often said that horror is a lot more than you think like hypnosis. You have to be in the right mood for it. You need to allow yourself to feel it, and you need to be primed. And this is a pretty good primer right here something about this place. Yeah, so right from the beginning, they're telling us, I don't know where I am, but there's something wrong with it. Ugh. I feel like it actually emphasizes how alien this is to me, that I'm getting jump scared by something that is in the place that I came from. Literally, this was behind me, and I won't know that until I come over here and see it it's actually arranged so that I'll see it out of the corner of my eye in the mirror when I come to read what's on the back wall. There's something off about this place. Is there anyone hiding in here? Nope, but I can't actually get high enough. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh there actually is. <laughs> well, this took a turn rather quickly. Although I'm imagining that I'm not actually supposed to get in there. I've probably just kind of discovered an easter egg. Also, minor comment before I get going. Is it just me, or does this mirror actually look a lot crisper than what I usually see on these source maps? I feel like there's usually a lot more aliasing. Or maybe the resolution in the reflections is usually downscaled. Either way, this looks really sharp. All right, well, let's get exploring. Well, that's kind of dead in the water. The door is blocked by boxes. Can I move them? No. Uh, maybe there's something I can get to break them? It's got to have something to do with these things. Wait. Wait a minute, shouldn't that actually be backwards? Wait, that's upside down. Wait. I think I know why it's not... I think I know why it's not aliased. It's not a mirror. Oh, that is so clever. That is so clever, and it works so well. Normally an illusion like this wouldn't really work too well in a 3D space, but this is just designed so perfectly. And I love how it's designed, so, like, it, it looks fine at a glance, it's just that subtle detail is off. There certainly is something off about this place. Why isn't the text backwards in the mirror? That is so neat. And we're free. Aw, oh, major props on that. That is so cool. Huh. And I see we're already face to face with one of the critical tropes in liminal spaces. Irregular construction that seems fine at a glance until you actually stop to think about what is this even for. An all glass paneled hallway with lights shining into an interior room and benches that are far too low to actually be useful for much of anything.
You hear that? There's like a low rumbling that kind of starts very low pitched and then slowly raises until it reaches a crescendo and then goes back to the beginning. Is that someone standing over there? Wait, I think that's going to turn out to be... Okay, either there's someone standing on a platform over there, or that's going to be paint on the wall. I'm leaning towards the ladder, but if there's nothing there when we get over there, I'm going to take issue with that. Oh, no, this is interesting. I think that is paint. But this is interesting. It looks almost like a plaza like you'd see in a shopping center. Like at an outlets type area, but... It's all indoors. There's a ceiling overhead. And I've just realized a new aspect... Or, or wait, are those skylights? I was going to say, I've just realized a new aspect that uh, could potentially trigger a liminal feeling, and that's electric lights immediately over the... Those footsteps? I was going to say, electric lights immediately over the, chop the tops of trees. Okay, there's a power box right there. I'll keep that in mind. Probably opens this grate. Yeah. But I was rewarded... Uh, I was rewarded before for checking out the bathroom stall and finding that uh, corpse easter egg. Maybe... Maybe if I'm willing to do a little platform, we can get something out of it? And that opens that. Come to think of it, though, will that also open the grate back that way? I mean, it's a long shot. I don't think it will. No, but I feel like I should check. I always feel like I need to be thorough, or I might miss something, especially since we've established already that this developer is willing to hide things. Nah. Was there... Did you see something? I wasn't even really looking, but it... When I turned, I could have sworn I saw, like, a shadowy figure standing right here. I could be wrong about that, though. That could just be the way... That could just be the way that that gap in that corridor right there appeared on my monitor for a split second, but I thought I saw someone when I turned around. Or maybe it's just my nerves, because this place really feels like I'm being led. There's a lot of subtle signs that I'm kind of being corralled in a certain direction. For example, the big red arrows telling me to look at that thing. That's one of the subtle signs. Okay, this just feels like when you go to do something and somebody tells you to do it and now you can't do it. Not gonna work. I probably have to utilize that power box. Hmm. And this is odd. So there's windows right here leading out onto that inner hallway. But the windows go to ground level. And so the floor is raised to about waist height. So having, like, irregular floor heights is something that I actually really like in architecture. My old uh, intermediate school actually had that. The place was like a haunted castle and I loved it. But it looks very, very weird to see. Now I could fiddle with that power box. Could do that. One thing I could do. Which, presumably, if past experience is anything to go by, would enable power to this thing and open that grate. There's a door right on that side that leads into it, so I probably don't have to do that. But then again... Oh, that's locked. See, I'm trying to anticipate, because I don't know if there's going to be, like, multiple choices here. If I can do things wrong and get myself cornered, I mean... Of course, that certainly looks like a less inviting path. But anytime I see something like that, I keep thinking... What if that's what it wants me to think? Unless there's, like, two different paths I can take, the black arrows or the red arrows. 
again, thought I saw somebody standing in the corner when I looked in, but again, I think it might just be the way this texture on the doorframe moved as I stepped into view. But that just goes back to what I was saying before. Horror requires framing, right? It requires you to be primed to accept the experience. And when, when something does that correctly, it doesn't even have to do anything to get you to make your own scares in your own mind. Uh, possible origins. Rebel superweapon, as if. Combine, cleared with admin. Interdimensional schism. Are you just making stuff up? SCP-682, don't even joke about this. Extraterrestrial containment. Not matching anything on file. Industrial byproduct? You know better than this. Oh man, this is what my math tests looked like. Anomalous artifact. Is this just another excuse to collect junk? We talked about this, Steve. While you're busy twiddling your thumbs with this nonsense, I'm taking a squad back to the epicenter. Maybe we missed something. Another power box. Wait, I'm, I'm not touching any power boxes until I've weighed all my options. I'm not making any decisions until I've seen all there is to see. The only problem, though, is that it kind of feels like even going in certain directions might be making a decision all its own. Bucket. Doesn't even look like there's a leak. Ah, another power box. Maybe I need to enable all of them. I know better than to look in there. I know better than to spend an extended period of time looking down there, and it sounds like spooky noises are coming out of it now. No, 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 no. I am... Uh, so, I really at times have to remember to suppress my movie, horror movie white guy instincts. Because I literally just got done talking about how I can't look in there, there's something in there. And then I heard that there's something in there, and I thought, well, I gotta go see what's in there. It's literally a compulsion. Uh. So dark. So dark, so dark, so dark, so dark, so dark. But props for not actually throwing a jump scare at me. Because it's still presumably fairly early in this map, and to do something right there would actually be to, to dissipate a lot of the tension that it's so effectively been building up. Ah, I kind of figured there would be some kind of easter egg here. I knew the eyes had to represent something. And it's another power box. Excellent. Do the eyes represent that I'm going to be finding a metal piece like in Condemned? Okay, so that one's open. I hope I'm not on a timer. That would be really annoying. Power box number one will hit you last. You hear that creaking? And was the soundtrack doing that before? Now that I've started turning on power boxes, I'm actually not entirely confident that these dangers have been cleared in terms of these dark rooms. Oh, and of course, how could I have forgotten to mention that uh, these halls are clearly mimicking the classic backrooms aesthetic? There's that kettle again. There was at least one more thing. There was at least one more power box. Why can't I remember where it was? I mean, besides this, wasn't there another one? Uh, I guess not. No, there's still one more to go. Where is it? This isn't that big of an area. I don't know why I'm having such trouble with this. I could swear there was another one back here. Got you. Got the one back there. I got the one in the main hallway. Unless they are actually on a timer and that first one turned off. What am I missing here? 
Ah, and here. That was the one I forgot. Okay. My mistake. That should be all four. That would have been a perfect time to round the corner and have something come crashing through the barricades and running out of there, but... Once again, props for not doing that. Ah, it's already opened. Really doing nothing to assuage my fears of being corralled, map. The darkness hungers. Is that a warning that I shouldn't be... Stepping into the dark? Watch your step, watch your step, watch your step. Yeah, I'm gonna take that warning seriously. And not go walking off into the darkness, assuming I'm safe. Very ominous sounds coming from that way. Gurgling sounds. Definitely organic sounds. It's... It's like a growling, but it sounds almost like... Garbled speech. Oh, look at those chairs. It's like a whole bunch of people were just... Staring down this hallway, watching, waiting for something. And eventually something. And they all took off and scattered. And of course, that's assuming they got away. And it's going to make me... See, a, a big part of horror is making you do things that you absolutely do not want to do. No, 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 no. I can see this map is effectively applying that in practice. It takes something that you already didn't want you you already didn't want to do and it goes and it makes it even worse for you. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I just got to do it. I just got to do it. I just got to just got to do it. Just got to do it. Just got to do it. I say, doing anything but just it. Okay. Mama didn't raise no quitter. <laughs> now, I don't know if that was just the sound of the battery scraping on the ground as I picked it up, but I could swear I heard something. Just as I picked it up, and oh, I just noticed something else, too. Look at that. The light completely falls off past a certain point, and on the walls, there's, like, tentacles painted. Almost giving it the appearance that the darkness itself is reaching out for me. That's clever, I like that a lot. I... Yeah, you were a... L oh, wait, maybe that's just, uh... Maybe that's just a texture glitching out. I thought you were doing a little flickery meme. Although... I feel like I would have noticed if you were there before, but then again, it's me, so maybe not. I think the, I think the flickering that we're seeing is a glitch, but... Yeah, because it's only in response to movement. But I still don't think it was there before. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody mention this before, but I actually do love, as a horror trope, what might seem cheap. But having sounds come from things that shouldn't have sounds, like showing a lion statue and hearing a roar, or just showing a baby doll and hearing crying on the soundtrack. I find it really creepy. A lot of people probably don't like it, though. Because it can seem kind of cheap. This makes it feel like I'm going to have to run. Nope. Uh, more of these immovable boxes in front of this wall. Or in front of this door. Why don't I take one and put it in this hallway? 
Because that is an image that just feels like I'm going to be chased at any moment. Hi. I'm like, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's chase music. And of course, I'd be running straight back into the jaws of an ominous ghost dog. Okay. I think you are entirely dead now. I think you're the last thing that I need to worry about. Once again, continuing my policy of not touching these boxes until I have some idea of what they're supposed to do. See, it's that idea of presentation. When you so clearly present what I'm supposed to be doing, I feel like I'm being led, and when I feel like I'm being led, I feel like I'm being led into a trap, because that's the only thing a person would ever be led into. Except maybe a... Surprise party. But given the circumstances, that seems improbable. Let me guess, when I pick it up, this goes out? No! Missed opportunity. Were those there before? I think not. Well, anyway. What are we doing here? Turns on the lights, and presumably whatever this goes to... Oh, that's spooky. I can see this is the insect hall. Ah, uh, I can... Uh, any, any mention of insects or things relating to insects, just instantly I can feel them crawling all over me. Those are the sounds of conversation. See, I, I love it when... Here, here's the thing. I think a big part of liminal aesthetics is having things that... feel familiar at a glance, but aren't at all familiar when you actually stop and take a look. So right here, the image that this evokes is... You're at a party, you're on, like, the second floor or whatever, there'd be a railing here, exterior windows there, and maybe down below is, like, the dining hall where there's a bunch of people talking and going about their business. But down there is not a lower floor, it's a black void. I think even having that hanging light, like kind of plays into that a little bit. I'm not sure if that's intentional. It's something I haven't really talked about too much, something I haven't heard anyone talk about. But I do feel that a big part of it is things that, like I said, look at a glance like something familiar, but isn't, like, literally isn't even close to that when you actually stop and examine it. Okay, so we can go down or we can go around and to here. It's all a question of figuring out where we're supposed to deliver this battery to, but I feel like... Hang on, wait. I feel like going down is the exploration path, and through there is the progression path. I don't know if that is a void. I think... I think that light is going to turn on when we've gone and delivered this battery to wherever we're going, but... Oh, there's more! There's another staircase hidden in the shadows underneath the first one. Oh, that's creepy. And, and... I can hear that classic Source Engine sniffling and whispering sound effect. It's become kind of a cliche at this point, but it is a good sound effect for what it is. That's a bloodstain leading... Down some sort of shaft, it looks like. Okay, let's place you here. Corpse right there. Oh, no, it's my friend from the bathroom. Okay, maybe I'll have a helping hand, or foot. That was surprisingly painless. Let's plop you here. Which lights my way to here. Now, remember, it did say to stay out of the darkness, and I have to imagine that it is going to enforce that, or else I'd be able to sequence break pretty hardcore.
Oh, I don't like that. Uh, it leads you to believe this is one long, continuous hallway, and then you finally get to the end, and it looks like there's actually a 3D space there. Pitch black that begins literally inches from my face. I just heard something. I think I just heard something. Oh, I don't like that at all. That is Jump Scare Alley, and it didn't even give me the validation of a jump scare. There actually hasn't... There actually hasn't been a really loud noise to be found. Now it's doing it on both sides. I would really not be comfortable. Even if I were standing right here, I would so not be comfortable reaching out to, to flip this box. But it seems those... No! Oh, uh, ow, ow. What was that? Oh, is it darker in here than it was before? Wait, what do I have to do now? Uh, ow, 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 ow. No, I guess I just had to run through. It does kind of have the imitation of a party. This is creepy. We were hearing all those sounds of conversation and good times before, and we get there, and it's just a bare room except for the corners and a couple of shadows painted on the wall, coupled with whatever that is. It's almost like the scenario that that brings to mind is imagine being asked to house sit, and there's a room that the door is always closed. And one day you hear the sounds of conversation coming from inside. And then you go in and find nothing but a shelf of dolls. It feels like they're looking at me. I do... Having played those sounds before and having me come down to this, I actually do get the impression that I'm intruding. And that they're all just watching me and angry that I'm here. D D By the way, this is proper map design. This is proper pacing and map design. Do you see how I'm coming up with these entire stories even though nothing's really happening? There's intention behind that. It's a very, it's all very deliberate. And it's indicative of a good map creator to anticipate the player experience. Okay, so that's still dark. I need to find another battery. Because it's dark in there. Any batteries over here, perhaps? Sorry, I'm standing on your table. You're just gonna have to deal if you're not gonna give me an easy way out of here. Yeah, I don't know where else I can check for a battery. Unless maybe I can... Maybe I can take one from one of the lights that's already there? Let's find out if that works. Of course, in order to do that... Oh, I see. I can probably jump through the window and skip that dark gulf. Yes, and I can take these batteries back. Yep. Coming through. Oh. See, what it's doing right here... ...is making it so that I think... ...so that I come to associate lights with safety... ...and then when I go back and forth... I have to remove a little bit of that safety on each subsequent trip. So at first you think, okay, one, I can handle that. But the second one... That's gonna be a little bit more of a pickle. Because it means that I'm gonna have to... ...run through this gulf in darkness. Alright, that didn't hurt me nearly as much as I thought it would. I thought I would have to tank a little bit of damage there. But maybe I don't ever have to, because when I was walking through that gap in the light, I did at that time have the option of climbing through the window. I just hadn't figured it out yet. Plunk. Come on, plunk. There you go, thank you. And then... So, I'm actually a little unsure. When I stand here... It's actually doing the opposite of what a light does in real life. Normally a light blinds you and you can't see what's beyond it. Here, only when that light's shining in my face can I see the most clearly down that hallway.
<laughs> so that's the thing, when you have- every time it's had me flip a box or pick up a battery in this segment, it's had these dark areas to my left and right. Now, to me, that looks like a- like a box with a carrot under it held up by a stick. That looks like the forces of the underworld daring me to come and snatch. What's down this way? Quite notably, the arrows aren't pointing to this one. An eye looking down on me and some question marks. Is this maybe not a good idea? And what is that weird, like, bloop noise that keeps playing periodically? I've been hearing it since almost the beginning, and... It seems kind of uncharacteristic for this map. Now, what did that light for me, though? What did it do? I guess I don't need this battery anymore. I can light that. Ah, outdoors. Oh, but not really outdoors. More like... a void. Hello, giant lizard. That is actually... That is actually kind of cool graffiti. I would like to see that somewhere in real life. So you come outside and you finally hear wind. And you kind of think... Oh, neat, I'm finally out. Not quite. Not quite indeed. Can I climb through here? I can... Uh, I love this. I love how it has all these little dark corners that kind of make you think they're important, that kind of make you think something might be coming out of them. And they're just utterly unimportant. You don't ever have to know. You're not ever going to see what's in there. And a line of turrets, which I imagine I'm supposed to be concerned about. Okay, so I guess that got rid of them. I kind of get the impression now that I've solved a puzzle I didn't even know I was trying to solve yet. Ooh. Wait, what just- oh, I stepped into the- Oh, I see. It's, uh, so that's darkness. That insta-killed me, though. It didn't start uh, nibbling at me slowly like the other one. I get it, it's a timed puzzle. I have to run along with the light. Alright, so let's get rid of the turrets once more. Off into the pit with you. And I gotta wait for the first one to come on. 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 On! Oof. And I guess... Yeah, I don't know. Oh no, don't make me platform. Oh baby, please don't make me platform. Unless, wait, this is pointing up, and there's that bulbous-headed figure painted on the wall again. But does it mean I'm supposed to be getting up into that room? That's a dark room, that doesn't really help me, sadly. I guess I really do have to platform. Oh, I'm not good at this. I am not good at this. I am not good at this. I am not good at this. Yeah. Yeah. That one looks significantly less doable. Yeah. 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 Oh. I am so not good at this. I thought that was going to take me like 150 tries. Not so, it seems. And I'm not going to press my look, but it kind of looks like I can jump on top of this thing and maybe get over there. And jump down over there. Uh, hmm... Maybe I'll try that later. In we go. Ah, you've relocated to there. That figure has actually acted as kind of a... as kind of a guide this entire time, always showing me where to go when it was a little bit confusing. What, what am I meant to be looking at? Is that indicating that I have to platform over those window tops? Watch your step. 
Watch your step. Watch your step. Watch your step. Watch your step. Now we can jump down onto there. I can probably jump over to here and platform into those windows, but wait, did I ever do anything with that box? Uh, more of this. But now I'm wondering, am I actually making a choice when I take different paths? There's definitely a distinction between the black and the red. Although this piece of graffiti has a little bit of both. Ugh. No, come on! Ugh. I feel like that last one like just kind of didn't come come up on me. Yep. Turrets. Turrets just caught sight of me somewhere. Yes, over there. Hmm, there's actually a lot of different ways I can go in this area. Is that blood on the stairs or just shadow? I'm starting to get really confused by this segment. I feel like I'm being pulled in a lot of different directions, and I'm not sure if I'm making choices when I choose to follow those directions. It may just be like before, where you will be happy. Honestly, this looks like a place where I could be happy, and that is some awesome... The graffiti on this map is on point. This whole place has kind of got the vibe of playing outside the school once it starts to get dark. Remember how exciting being at school at night was? I used to have, uh, I used to have Boy Scouts, so we'd have the scout meetings at school. And it was so fun, that period before and after. Before, where the sun is kind of going down and you're all on the playground. And then immediately after the meeting, when it's illuminated by floodlights. And there's something about the kind of sense of cool safety. The breeze blowing through this area. And knowing how high up it is, but you're protected by the by the chain link fence. Although, personally, I still wouldn't trust kids to play around here. Now that I'm older, everything just looks so unsafe to me. Even the ah nope nope that's dark that's dark that's dark. Okay. Pretty creative way to do map edges too. Feed me, Seymour. What is that? No, 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 no. You see how downplayed that was compared to all the other scares we've experienced so far? That was the closest thing we've had to a jump scare, and it's the kind of thing that you'd encounter in, like, the first 30 seconds of most horror maps. Did you see that? There's that figure again. There it is. Now you hear that. Every once in a while, it'll play, like, a few notes of, like, musical tones carried along with the wind. Occasionally, you hear that music, and it's like as soon as you can recognize, as soon as your brain shifts focus, and you recognize that, wait a minute, that's just not noises, that's music. By the time you are really ready to start listening to try and discern it from the background, it's already gone, and you're left wondering if you really did hear it at all. Have you ever had that? Have you ever had those times where you just hear what sounds like a few musical notes on the wind? We cannot go that way yet. But maybe I can push this forward? Yeah, that's the idea. 
All right, push it forward, push it forward, push it forward. Oh, wow, this is a little bit glitchy and very slow. But I do actually have some ability to push it from side to side. Maybe if I stand up... Okay, yeah, if I stand up, it pushes a little bit harder. Uh-oh, what am I stuck on? Yep. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, well, how do I get past this? If I run this way and... Oh, I'm dead. I don't know what I was supposed to do there. I have to... So clearly I have to push that out. Oh, and I also, for continuity's sake... I have to trigger everything from before. Yep. Maybe I can actually... I can probably push it through that gap. I probably didn't even need to make a run for it like that. I can. Pro I thought that I had reached some kind of blockage where I wouldn't be able to get it through. That's probably not even necessary. Yep, we can slide right in. It was just caught up on this light. I wonder if removing that battery will actually help me at all. Nope, not today, guys. Off you go. There you go. Goodbye. I kind of like how the uh, Half-Life 2 sentry guns are kind of mechanically the same as the Portal 2, or por just Portal in general sentry guns. Now, it looks like we're making progress, so before I get going... I'm just going to linger on this area just a little bit longer to talk about something I haven't mentioned yet. So remember before when I talked about how liminal spaces kind of vaguely mimic things that are familiar without actually being familiar under closer examination. So here we have all kinds of structures that are kind of iconic of urban areas, but don't actually form structures that you'd really see, like a rooftop playground. But the further we go, the more I feel like I've missed something by not jumping across those rooftops but earlier. Watch your step. That's why I take the ramp. Huh. See, this whole place, it kind of evokes apartment imagery. These plaster hallways, carpeted floors, and bricked up what would be doorways. But then you come out here and it's more like a prison or like a hospital. I feel like that's another thing. Not just evoking images that are sort of familiar but not, but also reminding you of multiple different types of things at once and not really being able to pin down any of them as what this environment is. It's again reminding me to watch my step. Yeah, I see what you mean. Definitely see what you mean. So we're gonna leave that. That's not something that's gonna be useful to me right now. <laughs> and there's a... Uh, they forgot to pencil in a no-draw right there. They forgot to slap a texture on that. So what I need to do, unfortunately, I am going to have to platform this again. But I really feel like if I continue any farther, I'm not going to be able to come back and see whatever's across these rooftops. So at the risk of dying on these platforming segments again... I am actually intensely curious to come back and see what's over here. Alright, gotta get a running start on this. Oh, just barely made it. That almost ended differently. I've never been good at platforming in video games. Now, what are these shapes inside there? 
I don't feel like jumping over to there is the right choice. I feel like I would slide off of that ramp. I feel like I'd have an easier time just jumping straight into one of these windows, right? Nope, I can stand on this. Thank God. It felt kind of like that was a ruse. Like, this would look at a glance like the safer option. But jumping through the window is really the safer option. Now, what has that done for me? And more importantly... Where do you come from, strange serpent? That's creepy. Oh, I love that so much. You have this wall graffiti that leads you to believe whatever this is, the origin is back there. And you go to open the door, and you can't. It's blocked by something. What's back there? Do you really want to know? I don't know if this really fits into the liminal aesthetic exactly, but I really like what they're doing with the damage here. How it's almost like reality is kind of falling apart in chunks like Minecraft. Like right here, there's a split right down the middle ending in the void door. Uh, I wonder if it's maybe going to be asking me to jump to that little piece right there, but I don't really feel confident enough to try it. And I feel like it's probably not what I'm supposed to do. Unless it's some kind of, like, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade uh, leap of faith, which... Uh, actually, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Hang on. Ugh. Oh, that did not look like it was... Ugh. Well, I'm in a pickle. Not gonna lie, this doesn't look great. Ah, platforming. Platforming! Alright. No, 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 no. Not what I wanted. I can go this way, or I can drop down there. Or I can drop down there. Both of those look like openable doors. Well, that one's locked. Anything of note over here? No, but down there... There's a box, a power box. Now, something that's kind of interesting to note, that looks like it's one of those red, uh, red eye graffiti things. But that's black graffiti. I'm starting to wonder if... Maybe they're not actually opposing forces. But the thing is, we do always tend to see the same types of things in red. And the same types of things in black. So I do kind of wonder what those differences are meant to represent. Uh, that's also going to be locked. We can walk across this beam... That looks like a temptation to make that jump. I'm not sure if I could do it, though. I'm not sure if that would work out. Let's try and climb up onto here. That's all dark in the back of that. See, this is almost... <laughs> that was def... Definitively, definitively a deep guttural cough coming from the blackness back there. And something that I like about this map and the darkness mechanic is that it not only acts as a way to give the map more mood, it acts as a soft barrier to stop you from investigating things and being too curious. Now, as I was starting to say, this actually evokes feelings of like a sewer entrance or an underpass at a park. The arrow is pointing off that way. I look around the corner and I can't really see where it wants me to go from here. 
Unless maybe I'm supposed to see... It's leading me to things that I feel like are very dangerous jumps. That I don't know if I want to attempt. Like if I come over here, I can see that that lip goes around to what appears to be an opening in the wall. But can I actually get there? That's the question. Maybe if I... Oh. You know, as somebody who's really bad at platforming... Hello. As somebody who's really bad at platforming, I keep just making it. Which is indicative of good design. Hello again. Hello two of you. Ooh. Triplets. Quadruplets? Huh. Well, now you're just trolling. This looks like an elevator. Like, if I step in, maybe something's gonna happen? No. Okie doke. See here, it, it almost looks like this area has been carved out. Like, like the buildings are just Jenga sets, like different colored Jenga sets, and some cosmic entity is just adding and removing pieces on a whim. Gnomes destroys some organic material, and also guns apparently. Can't be seen at all. Must find a way to study it. Requires absence of light. Disrupts equipment. Distorts space-time. Crossed out with, I'm telling you, bad architecture is not anomalous. <laughs> you just got lost. I feel... personally attacked by that. Unknowns? Literally everything else. Maybe ghosts? Be serious. You know, I wasn't sure if these were maybe a gag that I wasn't supposed to take seriously at first, but I actually really like this. It's something that also kind of appeared on a map I played a while back uh, called Schlepp's Liminal Space. As you explored this liminal labyrinth, there were actually hints, uh, mostly through graffiti rather than a whiteboard, that other people have been in this space before. And, you know, the kind of jokey vibe that you get from these, from, like, kind of from the language of these boards may seem kind of comic relief-y. But it's also, it, it does add to the scares in the sense that it's, it, it feels like it's putting real people into this situation. And you kind of feel like they're kind of trying to keep each other's spirits up in this way. But there is a real concern there. I don't know, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. This whole thing has just been me making up stories, but... You know, it takes a good map to do that, really. I think on the left there... ...is actually where we came from. And actually, now now that from this box I can get a, a better look at this plaza that this whole thing is overlooking... I can actually- oh wow, there's so much glare on the window that I cannot see anything from this one. It actually gives me the impression that, like, this map creator understood the idea of familiar but not spaces. So, you kind of have- your brain kind of makes shorthands for certain shapes to tell you what something is. So to you, a building will probably be a big rectangle with a bunch of little rectangles all along the surface. This creates that distortion where we have a big rectangle with a bunch of little rectangles. But they're not even like you'd normally expect. They're jutting out at odd angles or just taking irregular shapes. They're not... they don't look like they belong with each other. They look almost random. God doesn't build in straight lines, but humans don't tend to build completely random. So this is kind of falling right in the middle. And, oh, I almost walked away without talking about this. So here we have what seems to be some kind of, like, model city. But in the middle is just a big black semi-sphere. So it makes me wonder if this isn't some kind of representation of what happened here. Like, maybe this was a city and it's like some... 
some anomalous entity just kind of swallowed up the whole city center. That is darkness and we can't walk in it. Is somebody in... Is somebody in ghost jail? Hope these lights are more reliable than the battery-powered floodlights. That's an ominous chair if I ever saw one. I don't actually... I thought maybe I'd have something more to add. But I don't. That is a chair. It's placed ominously. Moving on. Look behind you, look behind you, look behind you, look behind you. Look behind you, look behind you, look behind you, look behind you, look behind you. So I can put it off all I want, like sooner or later I have to do it. But this is a commentary channel, this is where I overanalyze things, and if I analyze things too much, maybe I could actually go on forever. Uh, for example, if you look at the light bulb, the way it's shining in that box, it represents how, no matter how dark the external reality gets, there's always a light within. And even if it doesn't reach outside that box, you're always carrying that little bit with you. And if we can just continue to carry that light and talk about it for as long as possible, we won't ever have to turn around. All right, well, that was as far as I could take that. Hi. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 oh. Is that the end? No, oh, apparently I just straight up wasn't supposed to do that. You know, I wasn't expecting there to be anything there. I was even less expecting there to be what amounts to a JPEG jump scare. That's actually a little bit disappointing. But you know what? I think what I was actually probably supposed to do is just backwards walk out of here. Yeah, so kind of mixed thoughts on that. On the one hand, it was kind of cool to actually get killed after it told me to not turn around, and the actual solution is not to turn around. But at the end of the day, that was a JPEG jump scare just kind of covering up a hallway. It was much better executed than most, I must say. Yeah, there's that area we were in before. We have come full circle. And we've come to the source of that noise we heard before. It's almost like a kind of downplayed, like, smoke alarm or something, or fire alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Now it's telling us to go in there, right back to where we came from. But I imagine there's other things we're gonna have to figure out before then. Okay, so this is telling us where we can go. We gotta get some batteries, clearly, and activate some lights. What did that do? I actually... I noticed, like, a lighting change, but... Okay, that turns on the lights in there. Maybe we'll have to turn things off at certain points. Did that break the glass? Ah, it did. Okay, but... But now the battery is gone. That is such a cool implication, that something was there in, like, the one or two seconds that the lights were off, in time to run all the way across this room, grab that battery, and run back out. And, what adds another layer onto that, is that I was looking at it at the time. So it did all of this right in front of me, and I didn't even get to see it. Now, of course, we have to figure out what happens if we close the middle one. That closes both. So if I close this, will that close all three? No, just... Kind of? I feel like there's going to be a puzzle based around that at some point, but I cannot even begin to wrap my head around it. Oh, I didn't even notice these doors open. Okay, well, clearly we need to restore power so that we can enter 
Actually, we need to restore power so he can return to the beginning? This whole thing has been a big loop. Okay, so we're not going to be able to make any progress in here until we can climb through that window and place a battery right there. And the only place we know we can get a battery is right through here. You see the stuff? You see the gameplay you can establish within a small environment? It's actually set me off on a whole uh, list of things to do. With Stop! That's creepy. So this gets flung at me, and... It's, it's just dark enough. I mean, this might depend on the display, but it's just dark enough in there that I can see that there's something there producing that voice. But I can't make out what it is. Nope. Nope, this is my least favorite thing. Oh, this is my least favorite thing. Okay, so we have, like, these kind of irregular office cubicles, and it's such a maze that we can't see what's in front of us, but we can hear that there's something in there. Can I use these to... No, there's not enough distance between me and the ceiling. I was thinking maybe I can jump up on here and use that to climb around back there. Don't like this. Don't like this. This is my least... This is the least good of the things. Ow. Name ideas. The Hungry Darkness. Gloom Doom. Alan. The Absence. Feralis Obscurum. And that, friends, is what we call a title drop. And it's always cheesy, but it works better the longer you take to get to it. Now, back to this. I really like this, and if I weren't commentating, I'd be sweating buckets right now because... Oh, this idea of being trapped in this cramped space with something, you don't even know what it is, but you can hear it moving all around you. And of course, there's the fact that I have to question the wisdom of following these red lines. This is giving me real, uh... This is giving me real flashbacks, actually. This is hitting on a very personal level, because when I was very young, probably under five, uh, my mom used to work at a bank, and sometimes she'd take me in, and there would just be these, like, rows and rows of cubicles. It was a big building that went on for, like, literally a mile, at least in my three-year-old brain. And I would just have free reign to just kind of walk around, and... This is like that all over again. And not being able to see over the tops of these cubicles makes it feel like it did then, where everything is so samey, so you get lost and you'll just have no idea where you're going. Everything looks the same. I, I vote we continue following the... Oh, no, we can't. There's an invisible wall here. What's in store on the way back? Wait. There's definitely been a shift in the ambient soundtrack. It's introduced like an ominous drone. And amongst everything else. Now that I see the end of this, that it's not a breadcrumb trail leading to the box, I think it's meant to be a breadcrumb trail leading back. And that I should be very worried about deviations. Let me through. I am on edge.
Was this here before? Uh, uh, do, do, do you see? Do you see the power of properly building the mood? This certainly wasn't here before. Or at least I don't think so. Uh, I don't even know anymore. So much of this looks familiar, uh, unfamiliar on the way back. But I can't prove it because it's so complicated that I don't- I never really had a proper mental map of the area. I can place this on there or I can place this on here. What is it that I should be doing? More platforming for me? Oops. Luckily this is a little bit of a lesser stakes platforming. Box number two. See, the thing is, any time it makes me come down a corridor and do something, any switch I have to hit could act as a trigger. Ow. Yep, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> that was on me. That was looking down the barrel of the rifle to clean it. Pop you out, jump through window, and let's re-enter where we were before. Unless, I'm not sure if the room we were in before was just a stairwell leading up along that angle, or if we'll actually be re-entering the same space from before. If it is the same space, then I'm kind of curious to see how it'll have changed in our absence. Never mind, it's just this little area right here, and... What is implied to be much more beyond the darkness. Something that I like about this map is that it sets up the lighting in such a way where the edge of the darkness is very, very abrupt, and that almost looks like something wrapping around the edge, reaching out of the dark. But it's so dark, I can't really see what it is. Look behind you. Uh, I don't know. Last one. Last one out, get the lights. Well. You did say get the lights. Wait. Is there like a certain order I have to do this in? Okay, I'm a little bit confused. Hi! Um... Oh, I guess the, uh, the world is leaking. I feel like I did something wrong. Things could have been different. Oh no, please don't tell me I'm gonna have to redo the entire thing to get a different ending. Custom art by Andra. Wow, that was so impressive. I'm not really... It, it, things were kind of happening all at once at the end, and I'm not really sure what was going on with that. I don't think I really understood that correctly. But that was extremely, extremely impressive, and so cool, and such a testament to what proper mood building can do. I feel like this really knew its stuff, and it... I was kind of waiting for it to be a slow burn to finally end up in jump scares, and it never really did that, even though it did escalate to some more panicky moments at different points. It never really broke that subtlety. What I like about this map is that it maintains its subtlety throughout. The mood is the scare. So, where most things would normally go and start at 1 and work their way up to 100, this one starts at 1 and kind of works its way up to, like, 5. And normally that would come at the cost of not really having any sense of momentum or progression to the map. Like, you're just kind of getting through to get to the end for the sake of getting to the end. 
the way it averts that is by giving you a bunch of things to speculate on, and by having those notes from another party who are also speculating have maybe got a little bit more of an idea than you do. And in that way, it keeps you engaged the entire time. You always feel like you're about to learn something, or that you may have just learned something, but you don't know what to do with that information. It looks like I'm out of time, but thank you so much for suggesting this to me. This was a lot of fun to play. And what I like about it is that I actually had a lot to say about it. I feel like these days, a lot of the Gary's Mod maps that I explore... I, I kinda... I mean, I do enjoy them, but I feel like I say the same things over and over again. This is a really comfortable ambiance with the rain, or that's a really spooky noise I just heard, or this place feels really isolated. Here, I feel like it was giving me more specific things to comment on, and that was really refreshing for me. But, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any other videos you'd like to suggest, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, I will be linking the ModDB page in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.